Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to the Model Railway News. I hope you're all doing okay and I hope you're having fun with your various modelling projects and whatnot. Today I'm coming at you with all of the latest news from the industry for May. And we're kicking off with a little update from Acura Scale where there's actually been some activity. Now by activity I don't just mean new announcements as is the usual case, I mean activity in the sense that models are actually close to arrival. In the past few episodes we've talked about how some of their locomotives are getting dangerously close to being delivered, well this month we're talking about rolling stock. The first of which are the new HAA wagons, which is a range of coal hoppers from around 1960. Quite a good range of these models, 15 different packs you can choose from, and the packs are three wagons for around £75 each from the retailers. These wagons are due very soon, apparently, so if you're interested in them, I'll pop some affiliate links in the description, and if you'd like to see me review them, comment down below to let me know. There's also another range of wagons which is actually already in stock from Acura Scale. This time it is the HYA hoppers, much more modern hoppers from the last 10 years or so, and there are seven of these packs to choose from, and this time they come in packs of two for £74.95 as they're much larger wagons. Again, these look really cool. If you'd like to see me review some, do let me know. Up next. Elgin have revealed artwork for a re-release of their beautiful O2 Tango locomotive. And this is notable because the model is being produced in some new liveries that have never been seen before on this model, including a Great Northern Grey, which does look excellent, I will admit. But personally, my real interest is in whether or not these models have actually been improved sufficiently, something that you can't tell from the artwork images. So this ought to be very interesting, didn't it? I'm not sure why they've brought back this model, quite frankly. Yes, they've retooled aspects of it, but Previously, it was an awful model, at least I thought it was, and the retailers couldn't shift them. They were in stock for absolutely ages at a heavily discounted price, and yet here they are, they're re-releasing them. But I have made the decision that I am going to be reviewing one of the new ones, because I really want to know whether they've fixed the horrible problems that plagued this one that I've got right here. So again, stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in the Tango and we'll find out what transpires together. Hopefully they've done a really good job and they're going to be worth the massive amount of money that they now cost. Next up then, a little update from Dapol because some of the old Dapol favourites are actually coming back. First of all, we've got a new batch of the eye-catching silver bullet wagons, which are actually now in stock with retailers. They are £36 weathered, and if you want a shiny pristine one, they are £32. And I've got one of these, I reviewed it quite recently, so if you want to check out that review, I'll pop up a link in the top right right now. Yeah, they're okay, actually, and of course, because of this chrome finish that they've got, they are incredibly unique, and they're guaranteed to catch the eye of anybody looking at your layout, so great to see that those have come back and that they're obviously popular if Dapple have justified another batch of them. They've also announced a new batch of these, the IOA ballast wagons, this time in the Network Rail Yellow. These cost between £25 and £28 each and again if this is something you're interested in I will pop some links down in the description for you. And the final bit of news from Dapol is that I've heard the manners are very close to arrival. They're going to be here within the next month or two apparently so that is fantastic news. I suspect that if they're going to be the same sort of quality as the Mogul and the Large Prairie, then we're going to be in for a real treat for the Manor. So stay tuned, we'll get some updates on that as soon as possible. I do have one pre-ordered, so as soon as I get it, I'll be posting a review. And fingers crossed, it's an awesome model. I think it will be. Up next then, a little update from Rapido. As you know, they've got quite a backlog now of announced products which haven't yet been released, and yet they are still announcing more. This time they've announced an SECR, which is pretty handy, isn't it, given all the SECR rolling stock they've already released, six-wheel brake van. And in real life, 90 of these things were built from 1898 onwards. Rapido have shared some extensive CAD images and they show a very complex underframe on the model as you can see as well and get this as interior detail including full planking inside. Now that's quite a wonderful effect. How have they done this? How have they moulded both inside and outside of the body? 
I don't know. I assume that maybe the end walls will be separately fitted so that they're not trying to mold inside a body like that. But honestly, I've never seen anything quite like this before. So it's gonna be really interesting, isn't it? They are very Rapido priced though, but to be fair, this model does seem to have features that I've never seen before, so it's understandable that it should be a little bit more expensive. They've also showed off an engineering sample of their upcoming Lion locomotive model. And this is our first opportunity to actually see what the model looks like, at least roughly speaking, fully assembled. It is just a basic image, but if you look closely, you can glean quite a lot of information from it. For instance, you can see that the top of the chimney is real metal, so that's a quality feature. You can see plenty of other separately fitted details, which are also metal, and what is hopefully a largely die-cast body. Do you reckon those areas in black there are gonna be die-cast? Well, if so, then this ought to be a good quality model. And of course, the Lion locomotive is now available to pre-order on its own. You don't just have to buy a train pack, which is quite good, I think. And these are £152.96. And again, if you're interested in this model, I'll include affiliate links in the description for you. Up next, Hattons have shared an update on their Genesis project. Now, unfortunately, it seems they've been pushed back yet again. The new release schedule says that most of the coaches are now going to be with us before Christmas and they're not going to be earlier on in the year as we first thought. So that's, you know, it's frustrating, I guess, because many times we've been close to delivery and they've been delayed. However, to whet our appetites, they showed this video of the models being tampo printed. And as you can see, the process here is entirely mechanized and automated. And I don't know about you, but I didn't realize that there was quite this level of automation involved with the printing process. So at least we've got that to look at and fingers crossed the coaches will be worth the wait. In the meantime, Hattons have launched a beta version of a new feature on their website known as the Hattons Directory. And this is designed to be a resource that combines information on real vehicles with information on the models that have been produced in the various scales. And the directory itself allows you to browse these vehicles by country, by brand, by manufacturer, by the different liveries, or just a standard search function. So just to demonstrate, I'm gonna do a quick search for the HAA wagons that we've already talked about. And I know what I'm looking for this time, so I'm just gonna search in HAA into the bar, and up comes this information page, which includes photos of the real thing, and of course, information, which includes the type of vehicle that this is. It includes the builder, various dates, the operators, and it also shows the various models produced by the various manufacturers. So here we've got Hornby, Hornby's older version of the model, and of course, the Acura scale version of the model that we've talked about. And it also, quite interestingly, includes a list of the different liveries available. If I click on some of these, I can find more information about the models, and if they're available, it will take you to a page where you can place an order for them. My favorite feature in the directory, though, is the livery and operators section because you can scroll through a massive list of basically all of the different liveries that have ever been produced. And again, just to demonstrate this, if I choose the Great Northern Green, here we go, we've got a massive list of everything that's ever been produced in the Great Northern Green. And this even includes models that are not currently in stock. So that's really handy for finding out what exists in model form, and then you can go off and search for it knowing that such a model has been made. You also have the option to add any item in the directory to your wish list, and that means if a certain product comes back into stock, then you'll get a notification about it. So this is clearly a really useful resource, but do bear in mind it's not finished, it's still in beta. I talked to Hattons about this, and they said the thing they're really interested in is feedback. So give it a try, see what you think of it, see if it's helpful to you. And if you've got any ideas on how to improve it, if something's not working properly, or if you'd like to suggest a correction, then get in touch with Hattons. They will be very grateful to you. And I will include some affiliate links in the description so you can check out the new directory. It's quite a cool feature, I won't lie. Up next then, a little update from Backman, who have just made their summer 2022 announcements. Now, of course, they've got lots of different ranges, and there may be things that interest you in ranges other than double-O gauge. But if we're talking about double-O gauge railway models, nothing much new this time. Surprise, surprise. It's mainly just returns of existing models. But some of them might interest you, I suppose. This includes the 50-foot inspection saloons, three different versions of these for around 75 to £80 at the retailers. 
Seems quite expensive, but again, quite a unique piece of rolling stock. If you'd like to see one of those reviewed, please do let me know. They've also got their Class 90 coming back in the EWS and the Freightliner livery for £195 approximately at the retailers. And perhaps my favourite is the return of the Backman 08 shunter in a couple of new liveries. And quite notably, these are available much more cheaply than Hornby's. Uh, the Backmans are £127.45 approximately at the retailers, which is a far cry from Hornby's, which you can pick up for around £160 from the retailers. I do have an 08 shunter from Backman and I do quite like it, it's a good model that, so quite good to see the 08 back in the range I think. And of course as always there is a number of other items that Backman have re-released, so check out the whole range if you're interested. Finally then, a little bit of an update from Hornby, because one of their very high profile models has just arrived in stock. It is the Class 91 and it's available for just below the £200 mark at most retailers in both the GNER and the LNER liveries. Now I've not heard what these models are actually like, I haven't bought one to review. So my question is, have you? Have you got one? Are they any good? If you do know the answer to that, please let me know, I'd be very interested to hear. Up next then, Hornbeat have made quite a special announcement. It's a limited edition run of 34027 Tor Valley in a completely new purple livery as seen for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Now, get this for a bit of Hornby behaviour for you. This was originally advertised as a limited run of 1,500 models, but as limited runs often do, these sold out very quickly. So what did Hornby do? Well, they just upped the production run to 2,500. So what that means is people who thought they were buying a rare limited edition model of just 1,500 models actually had been misled and the models are now not as rare as they thought they were. So classic Hornby behavior right there. These are also insanely expensive at £269.99. Now they do say that Hornby and the SVR are donating a proportion of the profits to the Patrons Fund, which is a great charity, it supports a lot of other good charities, but still a great product and a very interesting one at that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Model Railway News. As always, if I've missed something that you think does deserve a mention, comment down below and do let me know. For now though, have a great month and I'll see you on the next one. Alright, cheers folks, take care.